What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein. Today we're going to talk about the mysterious elder brother to King Vendrick, and one of the most influential characters in the game. A man with an unbendable will who would do whatever it took for the pursuit of greater knowledge. It's time to talk about Lord Aldia. My lord made magnificent findings on souls. An accomplishment for the ages. He vanquished the four great ones and built this kingdom upon their souls. When King Vendrick first conquered the kingdoms prior to Drangleic, Lord Aldia was there to assist him. They say that Lord Aldia was the king's elder brother and helped found Drangleic, but he later lost interest in the land's fortunes. After King Vendrick's golems erected Drangleic Castle, Vendrick took the throne for himself, and Lord Aldia built a manor, content to focus on his experiments. The peculiar figure known as Lord Aldia attempted to uncover the secrets of life itself and view the undead as a key to this mystery. It seems Aldia focused his experiments on what causes life and how the undead could skip the cycle of life and death. He was intrigued by the curse of the undead, what it was and what caused it. His experiments brought him towards chasing other beings similar to undead. Dragons. The world was unformed. Shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. Dragons are known to be immortal, so for one focused on the idea of life, this would be a natural shift in progression in his experiments and studies. In order to conduct these experiments, Lord Aldia performed horrific things to his subjects. Terrible experiments were said to have taken place in the hidden manor in Drangleic. The mastermind presiding over the deeds was known as Lord Aldia. Like Lord Aldia, King Ventric also wanted to know the truth of the undead and how they came to exist. My lord made magnificent findings on souls. An accomplishment for the ages. Both Aldia and Vendrick searched for the secret of the undead curse, yet King Vendrick condemned his own elder brother to the mansion. They both sought the truth, but through different means, and their fervor meant the eventual withering of their familial ties. I believe it likely King Vendrick disagreed with Aldia's method of torturing those whom he experimented on. It's also possible Lord Aldia disagreed with King Vendrick's decisions after the appearance of the would-be queen Nishandra. Aldia invited great and twisted minds to his manor to help in his experiments. Several of the greatest minds converged in Aldia to weave strange new rituals. Warlocks in Aldia gave rise to wicked things and even cast forbidden rituals upon themselves. No one knows if they were born mad or if their own misdeeds drove them over the edge. He also invited others. The mysterious Lord Aldia secluded himself inside a manor to conduct various experiments. Those invited to the manor disappeared, replaced over time with malformed beasts that roamed its halls. His guests were transformed into ogres, basilisks, and enhanced undead. To imagine what unspeakable deeds were performed to create the northern and southern ritual bands, one need only recall the cruel fate of the residents of Aldia. I believe he experimented on the mixture of giants, undead, humans, and even the creatures of the realm. In the far eastern outskirts of Drangleic lies an old manor that is now long forgotten, as it should be, for the things that lurk there are better left unknown. Aldia's acolytes and sages donned a dragon set, and the armor was designed to bear the brunt of the ritual sacrifice's gushing blood, the nebulous face mask designed to deflect the ire of the ritual sacrifice. All of these connected to his ultimate goal, to create dragons and uncover their secrets. Looking at the enhanced undead, they seem to be a cross between an undead and a dragon, sporting a tail and other similar features to dragons. Killing them can result in getting a malformed skull, which looks just like a dragon skull. Possibly the skull of a dragon, a rare specimen likely too rare to be swung about willy-nilly. These enhanced undead seem to be failed experiments leading up to Aldia's ultimate goal. The peculiar figure known as Lord Aldia kept giants in his manor and attempted to recreate a dragon, but after some time, was not heard from again. As he was working to create dragons, he eventually disappeared. But in the end, he was successful. A guardian dragon awaits at the end of Aldia's manor, guarding over the entrance to the dragon Eri, the proof of Aldia's success. Here resides hundreds of dragons, and many more to come. 
At the end of the Dragon Airy lies an ancient dragon who rewards the player with the Ashen Mist Heart, an item allowing one to enter into the memories of powerful old ones. Manifestation of Ashen Mist received from the ancient dragon. The magic of the ancient dragon allows one to delve into the memories of the withered. Yet, something seems off. Brave undead. What did that dragon tell you? That thing is a prop. A false deity. Don't be fooled, my undead. You'll find a great creature far to the east. A colossal thing with the strength to match its size. Or something playing the part at least. Upon killing the ancient dragon, players will not receive an ancient dragon soul. This soul is found from the fossil lying deep within Brightstone Cove Tseldora. From killing the ancient dragon, players will receive a giant soul, indicating this indeed isn't a true dragon, but a creation of Lord Aldia's through his experimentation. So if we can infer Aldia created the dragons found in Dark Souls 2, what of the Emerald Herald, Shanalot? My name is Shanalot. The dragon gave me this name, for I was born with none. I was born of dragons, contrived by men, by ones who would cause and fate herself. They are the ones who created me. I believe Shanalot was created by Lord Aldia and resided with the dragons. Her goal seems to fit within that of both Lord Aldia and Vendrick to break the undead curse. But they failed. I did not come out as intended. Fate would not be bested and men were cursed once again. Ultimately, this was a failure, though becoming a dragon and returning to a world before the Age of Fire could be considered an alternate route, and the one I believe Aldia eventually took. It's my belief Lord Aldia is the ancient dragon found deep within the Dragon Airy. His goal was to create dragons, and his acolytes' armor are all described as being dragon sets. Meanwhile, the Bone Shield's description is, the peculiar figure known as Lord Aldia kept giants in his manor and attempted to recreate a dragon, but after some time, was not heard from again. I don't believe that it's a coincidence him attempting to recreate a dragon and going missing are combined within the same sentence. I believe this connects the two events. Now while it's possible Lord Aldia died and was somehow killed by the dragons, the Guardian Dragon's soul suggests Aldia may be controlling them. Do the dragons watch over the land of their own will, or are they in the grip of one of Aldia's spells? I believe it's the latter, and Lord Aldia is pulling the strings from atop his shrine. Additionally, I think it makes for a stronger narrative. We heard about the fabled Lord Aldia who attempted to recreate a dragon, and was himself turned into one. All this connects within the structure of his story. But that's my belief. There's also a belief that Lord Aldia may be Navalon. The reason why this could be is, we find Navalon within Aldia's manor, and he's the only human within the manor, yet Navalon should be dead. The heretic Navalon was executed along with his entire village, and the mere utterance of his name became a crime. Some say it was because he sought to restore the banned art of resurrection. Long ago, this naive vessel of mine set about devising new spells. The fool dreamt of bringing new forms of magic into the world. But instead, he created me. Mostly by chance, but he did a fine job, I must say. Navlon has multiple personalities inhabiting himself, and it could be Lord Aldia inhabiting his thoughts. While this is a possibility, I personally don't think this is the case. We know Lord Aldi invited several great minds to his manor in order to conduct his experiments. We also know from the Warlock Mask, Warlocks and Aldia gave rise to wicked things and even cast forbidden rituals upon themselves. No one knows if they were born mad or if their own misdeeds drove them over the edge. I believe this description matches with what we know about Navlan and the sorcerers visiting Aldia's manor. According to the sorcery Navlan gives the player Unleash Magic, the terrible deeds carried out in Aldia led to the unintentional birth of several shadowy things, all of them eerily malformed. I believe it's more likely Navalon was successful in his resurrection spell and resurrected himself, or a royal sorcerer visiting Aldia's manor attempted resurrection on Navalon, and he himself was fused with Navalon's being. There's an interesting theory floating around that Navalon could be Olenford, but 
that's for another time. Another character who seems to have helped Aldia with his experiments is Falcon the Outcast. Falcon uses the Sunset Staff, a staff said to have been forged in Aldia. And beyond that, he's also on Navalon's hit list, which could connect him to Aldia. Your target is Falcon the Hexer. As proof, bring me that peculiar scepter of his. Even beyond death. Lord Aldia continued to influence King Vendrick and Drangleic. King Vendrick's primal knights seem to have been initially created by Lord Aldia. They still roam Drangleic to this day, and the king restored a forbidden, long-lost art to create these inhuman abominations. On top of this, the Looking Glass Knight guarding the path to the Shrine of Amana wields the king's mirror. Multiple copies of this very same mirror can be found within Aldia's manor, again showing the influence Lord Aldia's experiments had on King Vendrick. Alright guys, that wraps up this Dark Souls 2 lore video. Do you believe Lord Aldia became the ancient dragon, was simply killed, or is in fact Navlan? Additionally, Terramantis is hard at work on his Legends of Drangleic series, and I recommend checking out his Aldia lore video as soon as it's ready. For more Dark Souls 2 lore, make sure to check out my other videos on the various characters and story of the game. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.